Okay. So today we are going to do a couple of exercises just to get more familiar with this uh, JavaScript syntax uh, and uh, uh, one about one exercise about uh, arrays uh, just to try to use some of these uh, constructs and uh, uh, another about strings uh, which I will tell you something uh, a bit later and then we'll move on to some more interesting things like the object model and uh, uh, and objects behavior in, in JavaScript okay so um, on Tuesday was it uh, we saw together this uh, list of possible main uh, methods for arrays um, if, if you compare it with other or with the standard libraries of other languages probably you find that there's a lot of uh, missing methods so very often we have to resort uh, either to looping with four loops uh, to iterate over the elements uh, or uh, next week we'll learn uh, to use the implicit looping uh, in, uh, in functional programming so but not not for today hmm? uh, there was two there were two additional say slides and topics uh, uh, about the race uh, that I wanted to comment with you today before doing the exercise uh, uh, about more say recent uh, syntaxes uh, that are very useful the shorthand uh, uh, syntax uh, uh, representations that are very well, quite often used uh, the first uh, is, uh, is a strange name it's called the destructuring, assi destructuring assignment where uh, actually the idea is that uh, while on the right hand of an expression like here we are creating uh, a structure okay so we have uh, two values one and two and we create an array which the we are structuring these two values into an array mm -hmm. we can do the same operation in reverse uh, on the left hand uh, side uh, of an assignment okay so in this case what happens is that on the right hand side we have a, an array type expression on the left hand side we have the, the syntax uh, that looks like an array uh, and what is telling us is that uh, the array on the left side on the right hand side will be destructured so separated in and the first element will go to x and the second element will go to y okay so it's a, a, a shorthand notation for saying x equal the first element of the array and y equals equal to the second element of the array but we are doing that in one single instruction Okay, you can say we are, uh, you know, saving one line of code, but actually, uh, the, the, you know, the convenience is also that uh, all the, the, these two assignments happen uh, um, happen simultaneously. So you can use the syntax, for example, for swapping two variables, without the need of an intermediate uh, third variable, temporary variable for for holding the, the swap values. So what you're doing is that we are we have x and y that are two uh, in single variables simple single variable we are creating an array we are structuring them into an array and we are destructuring this array immediately right after by putting the first value into this variable and the second va value into that variable and that's it and immediately after this array will be destroyed because it's no longer needed so it's uh, we're building on the fly some structure in order to reshuffle day, um, reshuffle values. Uh, just I, I try to be careful with, with my words. I'm putting this. I said, I hope I said I put in this value, the first value, into this variable. Okay. When uh, the assignment happens, uh, the value coming from y. Uh, doesn't remember that it actually came from y no, the y variable is no longer needed no, I create the array um, and the array will, will have two elements that will point to two values x and y are non, not needed anymore once I built the, the array that's why I can reuse and rewrite the variables by pointing at the same values in a different order okay always remember that uh, 
what, ha what counts here are not the variable. Variables do not have a content, only have a reference. So what counts is the values that are being um, inserted into that array. Hmm? Uh, okay, so the same comes for, uh, it can also be a shortened notation if you have a function that you want to return more than one value, just build an array on the fly and then destructure the array. Oh, then it's your choice whether to uh, store the result in an array. So let uh, Z equal to Cartesian, Z would be an array type. Or if you need to split the components of the array. Hmm? Okay, just uh, a generalization of uh, this operation, which is the, the interesting part, is done with this strange operator called the spread operator. Uh, with the syntax is three dots. Um, that stands for a series of elements uh, that were into uh, an array. Um, basically, what it's saying is that, okay, if I try to destructure an array and I don't know how many elements it contains, I cannot use a syntax like, like before, X and Y, because now I would only pick the first two elements and the next ones would be basically forgotten, ignored. Okay, I want, but if I have a third element, okay, I can add another variable here, but if I don't know how many elements, so uh, on the on the destructuring side of an assignment, uh, the three dots uh, stand for all the rest. Mm -hmm. So sometimes this spread operator is also called the rest operator. What is, the, what is remaining? Okay, give me all the rest, give me everything else. So everything else will be put into the Y variable that of course at this time would be an array because it must contain uh, all the leftovers. Okay, so it's a way if you have a, uh, what we're doing here uh, is done with arrays uh, and with arrays we could also use slicing or splicing to extract parts. So this would be not really needed in this case, but the same syntax will apply to objects uh, where we want to pick some properties from an object and so on. So uh, we, we see the concept here, but it will be applied more generally. And uh, the same operator can also be used uh, on the right-hand side of an assignment, where this also may be even more useful. Uh, for example, where I'm creating, I'm trying to create uh, an array, okay, with some elements, had, uh, and the toes, so you, know, you can recognize a rhyme hmm, that you sang when you were a kid. Um, here, I want to insert the elements uh, of another array. Okay, uh, so I, I should write here parts uh, index zero, comma, parts index one. If I don't know how many elements this, uh, uh, this first array has, I cannot write, of course, uh, the parts without any other specification because at that point it would create an array lyric with a string, an array with a second element, and other strings. So it would be a nested array. Mm -hmm. we, we don't want it. We want the single elements. So we are using the spread operator to spread the elements of the array as if they were single variables. So imagine that there's a substitution. Okay, this is just an array. I'm taking all the elements and spreading them over in this, in this place. This is working when I'm creating an array. It's working also when I, imagine you need to call a function and this function has seven parameters. So you could maybe all these parameters, you have them in an array, you can, but you cannot pass the, uh, the array because the function wants separate parameters. So you can just spread them over. So every time you have an array, you can convert this array as it were a list of individual values, okay? Uh, again, it's nothing fancy, it's a strange syntax, uh, the first time uh, uh, we see it, mm? but it's, uh, well, there are some common patterns basically that we are using uh, where this, uh, this is useful, okay? Especially when we are passing properties of objects. And this also tells us that we have a, um, a shortened notation and more, <laughs> I say, frequent usage 
uh, for um, the copying of an array, okay? Uh, last time we saw that uh, assignments, an array, assigning an array value to another variable only creates an alias, doesn't create a real copy. If you want to create a copy, we saw that there was, there's uh, this uh, uh, from uh, operator that actually copies the array. But actually a simpler form is just to say, I'm creating a new array here, whose elements are the spread of the elements of the former array, A. Okay, so I'm taking the element of A, opening them up, and then packing them into a new array. The fact that we are opening a brace here means we are creating a new array, so it will not be the same. Okay, this assignment of, uh, uh, creates a new array, and this array is composed of, of a set of elements, and it, these elements come from spreading the older elements of the previous array. So this syntax is used a lot because probably it's shorter and maybe it's also clearer than from, which is, I don't like it as a, as a method name. It's not, it's not copies, <laughs> it's from. Uh, another form is over where you can create an array from a set of elements, but it's just a, a different syntax for the square brackets. The off uh, method is a static method that does exactly the same as a literal. So what happens in JavaScript is sometimes there are strange uh, ways of using the operator. We just need to basically recognize them if we, if we need. Okay, so um, before going into strings, uh, I, I prepare a very simple exercise here to, uh, to do together. Okay, the first one, okay, we are trying during the course to play with some exercise where actually we play with the, uh, the score of the exams, okay? So the list of your exams and score is something that we, we know very well, it's very simple as a structure, but uh, it's a list, it contains strings, it contains dates, uh, it contains numbers, so uh, we will see you know, how to handle different types of data in sim the simplest possible way. Hmm? Uh, so there will be a set of exercises that will try to uh, Start from very uh, simple uh, exercises like this uh, and we'll go to actually web applications that will manage that. Mm -hmm. So the first uh, uh, exercise says, okay, let's try to de develop a small JavaScript program to manage the scores of your exams uh, that you got in, for example, in the bachelor degree. So you, are at, you have already a lot of scores. And at this moment, uh, we only define an array with all your scores in, chronolog in chronological order. And for the moment, uh, uh, just embed the scores directly in the source code. So we are not learning how to read data from the console, from the command line. We we'll never do that because in JavaScript, we, are, we, are, we are never have a user uh, using the console. It, it's it's a really a complex operation because it needs to be done asynchronously and so on. Uh, next week, we'll see how to read data directly from, from a database uh, where we'll get the information we need. Mm -hmm. um, so for the moment, we don't have that yet um, because it requires a synchronous handling. And uh, so let's just create a constant in the code. And uh, let's forget for the moment about the names, ju just the score, the credits and the dates. We will add them later, okay? Because we need object for doing that. And uh, what we do with this list of uh, courses is uh, improving them. So eliminating the two lowest ranking scores uh, and adding new, new, two new scores uh, whose value is the average of the existing ones, okay? So you remove two scores and add just a stupid exercise to, to, to play with arrays. And then we, well, we print both of the arrays, so the initial one and the one with improved scores, and we compare the averages in two cases. Very stupid. Mm -hmm. uh, just to, to get familiar with the environment. Right? So uh, let's create a new file here. Uh, I can create a new file in several ways. So one is here right clicking on the project uh, and the other is the file a new operation. The difference is that if you do file new, it creates an untitled file uh, and it will uh, understand that you're writing JavaScript only when you save it with the JS uh, extension. Uh, otherwise, if you create a file here, 
it will ask you for the name and maybe it's better because you already know the extension so improves course .js. let's close some stuff okay that was a bit, that was a bit large okay so we are trying to write the some code for this uh, am I recording yeah. and we always start with use strict remember that oh, in order to disable the the ugliest part of the language of the old language and we want to create uh, you know, a variable containing my my exam scores and in this case it would be a, a constant uh, array of uh, integers so I don't know 28 25 21 30 the ugly 18 uh, what 24 22 something like that okay okay um, It's just a simple array of numbers. Let's try to print it and see how it works. Okay. So we can print uh, the array and the console is uh, say intelligent enough to convert the array into a visible representation. Now we have a uh, first program, we, we are ready to, to run it, so we can go to the run dialog here, uh, where we have some, some options. Uh, the basic one is run and debug, which is also F5, basically, bound, bound to the F5 key in the, uh, in the keyboard, uh, that st uh, starts running and debugging the current file or control F5 if you don't want to activate the debugger, but uh, usually by default, so <laughs> it's always <laughs> good to, to have it uh, activated so that if uh, an error or a breakpoint happens, uh, you will be into a debugging session. Uh, VS Code is quite complex in this because it's you know, built around the idea of launch configuration. So you have maybe, maybe a big project and you have to set a lot of uh, parameters in order to launch the project. Uh, uh, and so it really wants you to create a, a file which is called launch.json with a set of parameters and so on. For the kind of simple exercises that we're doing here, it's not needed, so we can just uh, type F5 and try to say, okay, let's select one default launch configuration. That for us would be not JS, of course. We are running on the server on Node.js. Uh, we didn't have the console. Okay. So uh, in the console part, uh, on the bottom part of Visual Studio Code, uh, what we have is the, well, the output of the program, but usually we don't have uh, much output. We have the debug console, so that's what comes out on the console object. And we also have a, a terminal, which is a, a prompt on, on the, the operating system. So for running this uh, example, we can either use the integrated debugger, so we press F5 and it runs. You see on the left uh, that something happens uh, because the debugger activates while the program, the program is running, and then when the program stops, uh, the debugger shuts down. And, uh, and you go back to these three buttons. Uh, this is a bit uh, inconvenient because when, when the program is over, you don't have any debugging information, you cannot inspect it. And sometimes when the program crashes, you would like to know the variables, but the debugger already shut down. But we'll see. Uh, the second uh, possibility is to run the program yourself. Okay. Forget about debugging, forget about being in a development environment, uh, just know the improved course, uh, maybe in the correct directory. 
with O1 uh, info. And we run. What you see is a bit different because in this case, the array is printed on the Linux console, basically. So the console object is the basic uh, standard library one. In the debug console, actually the object console is taken over by the debugger. And so actually it will print it in a different way, in a way that can be inspected. You see this arrow here, it means that you could, you can't, but you could <laughs> open that and see the individual variables. Right now it doesn't work because the program is already finished. Uh, normally, JavaScript programs are intended to run forever, so in a loop with a server, so the debugger is always active because the, the script is already active. Right now the script has ended, so we can, otherwise we could here inspect the, the individual values and, and drill down about uh, the property, hmm? not with a, with a so simple program. Okay, so we can interact with the debugger that is powerful, but it also has some, some quirks, uh, or just run the program interactively with the, by launching node. Hmm? Uh, actually, also in the debugger, you see that the program is being launched by invoking an external node interpreter. The only difference is that after this, the debugger will attach to the code and in the terminal, uh, not. So. Um, what if you want to, sorry, to print these uh, values in a nicer way, instead of just on the default uh, syntax, we could create a string uh, with a list of, of, uh, of names, of, of scores, uh, by using, for example, the join method, uh, by creating a string uh, with all the scores separated with a, with a comma, hmm? for example join is one of the methods in the slides uh, that can convert an array into a string by using the separator string that you specify there. It's a method of the array object. Hmm? Okay, but this was just uh, the ABC. Um, what we want to do is to find uh, the minimum scores uh, and uh, um, and remove that uh, from the array of scores. Ah, uh, we defined a const, okay? So what do you think uh, will happen if, you are, I, if I try, for, just for the sake of example, to uh, modify one of the scores? It's a const. Does it work or not? Who thinks it works? You're right. The others not so much. Uh, we are, because in this case, we are not modifying uh, the variable scores. We are not reassigning the variables. We are modifying some detail, some property of a value object that is stored elsewhere. Okay, so uh, this, this works. Uh, maybe we can do that. We print it and see that is, it actually works. Okay, the 28 became 29. But of course, if we are trying to add a new element, Can we do that? So first it was easy, I'm trying, I, we, I were just modifying the inside of the array. And now we are, I'm calling a method that will extend the size of the array. And we can do that, of course, because we are not modifying the reference course. Still points to the same object, the object is now extended. What we could not do would be something like this.
is another way of adding an element, okay? I create an array with all the previous elements plus a new one. And uh, this face with the error assignment to constant variable. So it doesn't really care about the values. You see the, uh, the error message. The error is trying to assign, so the equal sign, to a variable which is declared as const. So const doesn't care at all about the contents of the value that I'm modifying. It only cares about the variables. I cannot reassign the variable. What triggers the error is this equal sign. As long as I manipulate the object, I can manipulate the content of a constant. So the const is the reference that we cannot change. It's not the value, just, just, just not be confused. That's why const is more frequent and more useful than in other languages. Because it actually lets you modify the contents and so work with your data structures. It only prevents you from mixing the variables, declarations, and so on. So unless you really want to redefine a variable to point to something else, uh, you, you can use the, the const instead of a let. Hmm? Uh, so for example, of, of this page of methods for uh, adding a new element, I would not use the concatenation method. I could use score.concat square brackets, another number, that would create a new array. And it's perfectly legal, I can create a new array, but they cannot store that in the old variable. Hmm? So that's why it's important to, to, to distinguish between the two types uh, of, uh, of methods, modify modification in place or otherwise. Okay, so we just play with that to get more familiar with const. Let, now let's go on with the exercise. Stop the debugger. Um, so we want to create. Uh, so the text uh, is telling us that we, uh, at the end, we need to print both arrays. So that it means that the modifications should be done on a different array than the, the one because I need to keep the original hmm, for printing that at the end. So the first uh, step at this point would be to create a new copy. So const new scores as a copy of the current ones. And now we are not afraid of using const because we know that we can then modify the contents as we, as we wish. And uh, we need uh, the first operation we need to do is to um, find the minimum scores and delete them. Okay, so find the minimum. Uh, well, it's just a loop. There is no minimum method for, for arrays. There is no sum, there is no average. You need to do that yourself. Uh, a lot of these, uh, say, low level uh, operations, uh, uh, there's a very popular uh, extension which is called uh, low dash, called low dash library. Uh, because it, low dash means uh, underscore, dash, but it's low, okay? Um, this library defines a lot of, uh, let's say, helper function, like uh, there would be a dot, uh, dot mean, low dash dot mean, or low dash dot, dash, uh, dot sum, and so on. And, uh, but, so a lot of, you know, uh, function you would expect to find uh, are not in the standard library, but it's uh, in this, additional module. We'll see how to import the modules later on. But for now, we just play with the language, okay? Um, so, finding the minimum, the position of the minimum, let min minimum position equal to zero for let i from zero is a normal loop, i minus new scores dot length plus plus and uh, if uh, scores 
of uh, i is less than the scores of the minimum position, then we update the minimum position to i. Extremely advanced code. Yep. Yes. Yes, there is a short method, but uh, uh, it is here. Sort the element of the array in place. Okay. So you could sort it and pick the two. Yeah, but then you will lose uh, the chronological order of the scores. So that's why I'm, I'm doing it the hard way. Um, okay, sorry, I forgot, okay. Okay, so, uh, but we are just, okay, not studying the minimum algorithm and playing about with the variable. So I just uh, had a standard um, um, loop for looping over the array. Why do I know it, do I, why did I write uh, an explicit for loop uh, instead of writing the for uh, for example, x of uh, new scores, and do something here. Hmm? I could have done that. So there's a different way, the, the standard way of iterating over the race. The issue is that here it iterates over the values. So x will get the values of the, the number, the scores, okay, 24, 25, 28. But if I need to delete one of them, I need to know the position not just its value. So for computing the minimum, it would be perfectly fine. For computing the position of the minimum, no, because then I would know that the, the lowest score is, was 18, but I wouldn't know where it is, where it was. And so I would need to search for it in a search. So it would be stupid to scan the array once to find the minimum and then use the index of to scan the array twice <laughs> and find its location. Right? But if you, we only need the, the values, for example, for computing the average, then the of syntax is more is simpler. It's more direct and less error prone, basically, because we, are, we don't need to write the increments and the comparison and so on, right? Um, okay, so let's, let's keep it for later. Uh, and at this point, uh, we know where the minimum is located, uh, and we must uh, kill it. Hmm? Killing the minimum it means deleting an element inside an array, and we know that we can do that with splice. Okay, push and pop and so on only act as the boundaries of the array. We need to delete an element that could be inside. And so, splice method uh, removes uh, a sequence of a subset of elements from the array by knowing the starting index and the number of elements to delete. And optionally, it could insert new elements, zero or more new elements, in the place where I deleted them. Um, we can also use splice, by the way, just to insert new elements without deleting anything, just by putting zero to the count. Okay, so we need just to, just to insert something in the middle of the array. So it's a very versatile function. And it works in place. So it doesn't create any, any new array. It modifies the current one. So we could uh, new scores, splice, minimum posi position, one. I wrote, I declared minimum position and I would let instead of const because they will change. You see that I'm constantly reassigning minimum position. It needs to change. And I'm constantly modifying, this is an assignment too, the index value. So that they must be mutable. They must be changed. Okay? Uh, right, I'm lazy, I do it twice. Okay, I repeat it twice because I need to delete the two lowest score. Okay, I could create a loop, but. 
And if I run this, and maybe I try to print, okay, this was the first scores, and maybe uh, let's print the new scores here. Let's comment this for a moment. And this is new scores. Now let's see what comes out. A five. Okay, I got an exception here. So sometimes the debugger shows me the code, uh, sometimes shows me the uh, the exception. This this code it is not my code; it's the code inside the debugger. Okay, that catches my catches the, the exception and tells me something. And uh, if we go to the debug window, it will tell me in the error variable, or even you can over here, will tell me the name of the message. The identifier mean pose has already been declared. So what's the error here? The error is when I copy and pasted the code this let, I, no, I copied also the let and uh, was trying to create another variable with the same name. Of course, I want to reuse it, I want, don't want to create it. Uh, it would be better to have a loop. Instead of copy and pasting, I can create a loop. And then in this case, the minimum position variable would be inside the loop, inside the scope. And that every iteration it could recreate a new variable with the same name. So it wouldn't have this kind of issue. So if you are creating variable variables only locally where, where you need them, you don't run into this kind of problem. So in a way, well, we are learning some ways to protect ourselves from our mistakes. Okay? Uh, ra now it should give me, okay, the same scores in the same order without the 18 and the 21. No? There's something wrong? Yeah? Yeah. New scores. Thank you. That's what the buggers are for and what students are for. Finding my bugs. Okay. That's better. And now I need to add at the end uh, the average value. Uh, when I, I reread that text yesterday, I think it's a bit ambiguous because it's telling me add the two new scores at the end, and this is clear, equal to the round average of the existing scores. And so existing could be the old ones or it could be the, the new ones. So the average of, of which? of the scores of the or new scores. I don't think that I wrote this clearly. So I choose one, <laughs> it's the same. Probably if we want to improve our scores, uh, we should build the average of the new ones because otherwise uh, we are just substituting two scores uh, with the other score that will lower or keep the same global average. Is the same, just uh, uh, it's uh, an, a, li a little ambiguity in the text. So right now we want to compute uh, the average over new scores. And uh, this can be done easily by a loop like this. Uh, let uh, average, new average equal to zero, and then we do all the computation. For the sum and the new average, uh, we divide it by the uh, new scores dot length. Uh, length. So right now I made a very simple for for uh, for all of co um, loop because I know only need the, to parse the values. 
these kind of operations we'll see that uh, can be done easily in functional programming with a reduce operator okay that takes all the values and create a synthetic uh, result of just one value so we'll try to when we see uh, functional programming we will rewrite this code and also produce one to use those functions that will be more JavaScript like okay so we are now writing procedural code like we were in C more or less hmm? just to get familiar with the environment and then we'll try to move it uh, to, uh, to a more JavaScript like style ah sorry I need to also to uh, at this point uh, to push uh, not not the, uh, not the average new scores push uh, I need to round it so there is a math that round to be run to the nearest integer new average and let's do it twice so let's move the print of the new scores at the bottom and we see that we have the same number of scores but uh, with the uh, with the two final scores that are better than the, the ones that were deleted okay so the final point of the exercise I'm not going to do this was just okay we will print both arrays uh, comparing the scores before and after the improvement and showing the averages okay just for for the sake of time and we already see how to go uh, we need to recompute the average of the old one and recompute the average of the new one that may not be identical to the average that we just computed because we inserted some rounding operation here so if I add the two values exactly equal to the average then the average would not change of course by definition but I'm, I'm adding something which is slightly higher or slightly lower than the average so probably the global average here with the all the scores is di uh, slightly different than the one without the score but this is just in case, okay? Just writing. Uh, I don't want to write again these lines of code because, okay, we we will learn fun how to create a function. Uh, so uh, let's uh, let's use that for uh, creating a function that repeats the same code three times instead of doing cut and paste. Hmm? I don't like it. I don't like cutting and pasting code because, okay. So that's uh, basic basic operations about the arrays in this case we are we were using just arrays of numbers hmm? because it's the only data type that we know a second data type would be uh, strings that uh, uh, it's a uh, definition is a string is a sequence of uh, characters that's easy enough the two important words here are Unicode. We already saw last time that Unicode is the, by default the only encoding that JavaScript supports, and it's good, and it's immutable. So he, having an immutable object, and we see a lot of those in functional programming, means that once we create a string, that string cannot be changed. So instead of an array where we, we saw that we could modify the first element, or we can add an element at the end or delete an element in the middle none of these can be done with strings if you need to modify a string you need to create a new string every time you cannot modify that one so there will be no method no syntax for ever modifying the contents of a string once it's been created of course you can always create new ones and assign them to non-const variables that will be then updated okay uh, well, it's not a new thing, also, also uh, string in Java and also strings in Python have the same property, okay? So just not think about the uh, strings in C, the, which are arrays uh, after all. Um, the length of a string, uh, it seems uh, stupid say, to say that it's the number of characters, uh, but it's not so, <laughs> uh, so simple in, in, in reality because Unicode the characters uh, may have a variable number of bytes in their encoding okay so uh, this, this definition of length is, is the sensible one 
we want to know how many characters. Even if you have a fancy characters uh, with uh, with a lot of accents uh, of a strange, uh, strange for uh, for me script uh, that takes two or three or four bytes, uh, uh, it counts always as one character. So we the the encoding is totally transparent to us. Okay. Um, Okay, then after that, when you are reading the content of a string, uh, it be behaves like an array, so zero-based indexing of the individual characters. There is no character type in JavaScript, so even this, the first character is itself a string hmm? of, of length one, of course. Um, okay, the, we already saw that the syntax is sing, simple or double quotes. Uh, uh, every string operator operation, since strings are immutable, this is a consequence of immutability, immutability uh, always return new strings, okay? Uh, so, for example, we have a concatenation that is, uh, we don't need a concat method like in array, we just use the plus. By the way, the plus works uh, with strings, it doesn't really work with arrays, so it's a bit uh, asymmetric. Like, let's see some example that creates usually there are a lot of bugs. Huh? If we open an open environment, we, we know that A plus B is a concatenation of two strings, A, B. Easy enough. But if I try to concatenate an array with one with an array with three, I don't get an array with one comma three. I get a string <laughs> with 13. Hmm. We know it stinks because of the automatic conversion to strings and so on. And if I use that with a longer string, it stinks even more. Because it's converting the array contents to a string by separating with commas and then it concatenates the strings. What we really wanted to do was to create the concatenation of the two arrays. That works. But the plus operator doesn't work with that, with the, with the array. So the, the danger, let's say, in JavaScript is that when a given operator doesn't work with the data types that you are providing, usually will default to do something with strings. And I would prefer at least a warning, okay? But uh, that's what I get, okay? Um, about string methods, uh, extracting a character at a given position, finding a, a character or a substring, uh, Instead of string, uh, checking whether the beginning of the end or in the middle we have a substring or not. So they, this one, the first one return the position, the index position, the other return just a Boolean. It's included or not. Concatenation, conversion from numerical value to character. So we, if you need to work with the ASCII code or Unicode uh, um, code points. Uh, Split is interesting because uh, it uh, splits a string into an array of strings. Okay, if you have a string with, I don't know, comma separated list of value and so on, uh, split is the inverse of join. It will split the long string into many strings and put all of them into a separate array element. Okay? Uh, they will be strings. So if you have numbers in there, you need them to convert the strings to numbers. A slice is the same as the array. It returns uh, a subset uh, of the string uh, given the, st the starting uh, position and the length uh, that you want to extract, uh, like uh, substrings. Uh, they, they, are, they are the same. All these three do the same work. They only have different parameters. Okay. When you start writing the code, the help uh, the documentation will pop up. We have a whole chapter that I, w I don't want to get into of regular expression. So regular expressions are built into JavaScript strings. You will create a Java regular expression by writing that instead of a single quote into slashes, forward slashes. And then you have 
uh, in, in the standard library all the methods for matching, uh, searching, and replacing. Uh, so the difference between match and search is search tells me whether there's a match, and match will tell me where it is, or we can also replace. Uh, but you know uh, how they say when uh, you, when you have a problem and you try to solve it with, with regular expression, that now we have two problems. Okay, because uh, let's try to keep away from those. But if you want, uh, you can play. And uh, okay, and oh, the other useful one is the trim method that uh, uh, clings at the beginning and the end of the string. So if you are beginning spaces or new lines or type white space. At the, at the beginning of the end, uh, usually you want to throw it away when you're reading something from a file or from, uh, from, uh, from a stream and so on. Um, that's it. Uh, basically, the basic method that we expect on strings, uh, since we can, they cannot be modified, uh, you cannot do much more with those. And there's a special type, type of strings uh, that I find uh, very convenient, uh, which is, uh, they call it them template literals. Uh, uh, as there are strings uh, um, identified with the back ticks. Uh, so instead of the single quote or the double quote, you can also use the back quote for defining a string. And the meaning of the back quotes is, is different. First, uh, strings in back quotes uh, can span multiple lines. So if you have a long string uh, and you want to go to, to, to write it on many lines, uh, you can do that by using back quotes, in, uh, no, regular strings uh, with quotes uh, uh, needs to be only limited. You cannot you know, um, write it in, the, in many lines. Um, and the other feature is that uh, uh, you can interpolate some expressions inside the string. So in this case, you know, if you know F strings in Python, it's the same idea, uh, oh. less the formatting of um, so, if you have dollar braces, you can insert here any JavaScript expression that be, will be so with variable names, and they will be evaluated, converted to strings, and interpolated in their place. So, instead of doing by hand your string concatenations, this is a handy way of creating different messages with values and so on. It's much more readable. Hmm? I like to use it when I, when I need to. Okay. Um, there's not much more about strings. Uh, strings be strings. Uh, let's maybe do some practice. Uh, okay. By trying to uh, work uh, on the other, on another part of our list of scores, which is the name of the courses. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, so ne next week we'll try to join them to have names and scores together. Um, in this example, we want to start from a list uh, of course names. Uh, for example, these ones are the course of, courses of the first year. And uh, we have them as a long string uh, with names separated by variables. What we want to do is to create an array with the names, uh, the separated names individual names, uh, and create uh, the acronyms of the courses. So instead of writing computer architectures, we just write CA, hmm? computer automatically from the string. Just uh, some. And then print uh, this list uh, of the courses and uh, of, the, uh, of the acronyms. Okay, so we can, for example, do that uh, together with the uh, courses list, uh, names, let's call it names, such a yes, you strict, uh, and let's start with uh, uh, all, all courses as a string uh, that as a, lazy, as a lazy person, I will copy from the text here. Okay, so this is my starting point.
okay so just a string you can print it nothing nothing fancy there I, I defined it as a const so I cannot change uh, the variable or courses I cannot even change the content of the variable because the string is it's immutable by itself so the value also cannot be changed that will be something we cannot touch we want to create a list out of this string we are we have names separated by commas so we can just simply use uh, all courses dot uh, split use this split a string into substrings uh, using the specified separator and return them as an array so the separator is a comma if you have one two means that the same split method may have different types of parameters in the first time uh, it's, a, it's a string in the second type is a, a regular, maybe a regular expression. Uh, we can also split uh, on regular expression instead of, uh, of, of simple characters of substrings. This kind of syntax here is not uh, symbol split string, column, uh, limit, and so on. It's not JavaScript syntax, okay? It's an extension to JavaScript uh, that then led to the TypeScript language that try to describe the types of the, the acceptable types for this parameter, for these values. Okay, uh, we optionally, you could annotate a function with the expected types. This annotation will be, in JavaScript, will be ignored by the compiler. In TypeScript, they will be checked. But TypeScript is a separate language. Uh, and the documentation usually they, they, they show it uh, to give you an idea of what you can expect, okay? Uh, there's no real check, there's no real type check in there, but at, for the, at the documentation level, it tells you that uh, uh, you have a, a two parameters, which are a string and an optional number. Hmm? Okay. But so sometimes it gets more complicated than, than you need. Just uh, focus on, on the parameters. And, and this will create uh, uh, an array with a list of courses. Hmm? So we can see. The list of courses as an array of values. We, you see that we split the single string here into an array of seven elements. So these commas are no longer part of the strings, they're part of the syntax of the array. Uh, the, there's a bit uh, of detail that we need to fix because uh, since we split on the commas, there the spaces separating the names uh, have been, of course, inserted into the, the elements. So we want to get rid of these spaces here, and this space there, and so on. So we must, uh, once we have the course list, we must uh, trim all the elements. Okay, so remove spaces from the beginning and the end. There should not be spaces at the end, but uh, just to be sure. So for, uh, let i from zero, i minus, uh, less than course list uh, dot uh, length. We replace course list i with course list i dot trim. So, of course, list is a constant variable, but its contents are strings. I will replace every string uh, with the trimmed version of the current one. I cannot remove this space from the string. 
I need to replace the string with another one where the splice is no longer there. So we can create an array from a list. Uh, we can modify the contents of the of an array of strings. Uh, okay. Um, and uh, what the exercise is also asking us to do is to create the acronym in another uh, in another with the initial letters of the name of the course in another array. So for every element, uh, for every element. Uh, of the course list, uh, I will create uh, an element of, a, of another array, uh, acronyms, that I may I initialize as an empty array and then add one by one the acronyms of the different courses. And I can iterate over the names uh, of the course list, uh, so it doesn't like name for some reason. So uh, course name, course. Uh, I just want to, okay, no, let's do that, let's do it later on. Okay, so I'm iterating over the names of the courses, I don't care about the indexes, and for each course I need to create uh, the acronym of that course. So what should I take is to take every first letter of a word and put it into high uppercase. Um, so let's, uh, okay, create a new acronym for this course. Start with the empty string and then iterate over the characters. Uh, no, it's not an array, I need to iterate over a list, a string, so I cannot use of. Uh, so I, I need to iterate with, the, with an index, let i equal to zero, i minus uh, a course, course length, course is a string, remember, i plus plus, uh, and then if, uh, so if I'm in the first position, or if I, I know that the first position is never a space because I, I just removed it. So if i equal to zero, or I am farther along in the string and I'm in a character where the previous one was a space, right? Course i minus one was a space. In this case, I'm can add to the acronym a single character, which is the character I'm over it, course dot I, uh, course, uh, index I, converted into uppercase to uppercase. And if this is right, after this boring cycle, for cycle, I can add it to the acronyms array. I can push this that I just computed, right? It could work. I don't know, let's, and console.log uh, acronyms. Let's see what comes out. It's very, we have been writing very low level code for the moment. Hmm? With 
only arrays, numbers, and basic strings. It's C level code mostly, and we'll try to move on with the new uh, construct with, that we are going to learn in a moment. Uh, it, the text also asked me to write uh, the list in alphabetical order of, of acronym, and it's quite easy because you just need to sort it. So if you want, ah, the code is here. We could uh, acronym.sort. Sort method usually sorts by the value, by the direct comparison of the values. But if you want, you can also provide a comparison function so you can sort up with the, the criteria, criteria you like and when we see um, objects and, uh, and callbacks function, we learn how to do that. But for the moment, uh, the normal sorting algorithm is fine with us and we'll just uh, give us the names uh, of the acronym in alphabetical order. Okay, so that's the basic. Any issues? So, if, we, if this is easy and clear, we can try to move on. Uh, 